అందరికీ నమస్కారం స్వాగతం ఐ వెల్కమ్ యూ ఆల్ ఫర్ డే సెవెంటీన్ క్లాక్ టు స్పోకెన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ సిరీస్ ఆఫ్ ఎస్ఈఆర్టి ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ విచ్ ఆర్ స్ట్రీమింగ్ ఆన్ ఎస్ఈఆర్టి అఫిషియల్ ఛానల్ యాజ్ వెల్ యాజ్ యూ ఫేస్బుక్ సో బిఫోర్ గోయింగ్ టు స్టార్ట్ లెట్ మీ వెల్కమ్ అండ్ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ అవర్ టుడేస్ రిసోర్స్ పర్సన్ డాక్టర్ రవి రవినారాయణ చక్రకోడి గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సార్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సార్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సార్ సారీ ఫర్ డిలే ఫ్రమ్ అవర్ సైడ్ లెట్ మీ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ టుడేస్ రిసోర్స్ పర్సన్స్ టు ది వ్యూవర్స్ సో రవినారాయణ డాక్టర్ రవినారాయణ చక్రకోడి ఈజ్ ప్రొఫెసర్ అట్ ద రీజనల్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఆఫ్ ఇంగ్లీష్ సౌత్ ఇండియా బెంగళూరు where he trains in service teachers in english language pedagogy he has an ma in tsol with the distinction from the university of lancaster uk he has worked as the chairperson of second language english textbooks for the department of education government of karnataka his book on learn english teach english English Skills for Teachers was published by the Oxford University Press of India. Such an eminent resource person today we, have, we are having. Uh, for, uh, to avoid further uh, delay, uh, I request uh, Prof. Uh, Ravinara and Chakra Kodi Garu to uh, give his uh, talk on assessing speaking. Good morning, sir. Welcome. And please start your presentation. Good morning, session. sir. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Uh, and thank you. thank you very much for the introduction good morning teachers extremely sorry for the delay there was some technical issue with the crt andhra pradesh so i just hope we'll have a smooth session here after is my voice clear sir yes sir yes, sir is, hello go ahead there hello? is a, there is a is, pause now okay. you can go ahead now okay yeah is it audible all right yes sir yeah so good morning everyone i am without much delay i am going to start the topic topic is assessment we will mainly look at assessing speaking we won't talk much about assessing students speaking in we'll focus more on assessing ourselves assessing my own skills to speak is it okay audio is fine sir okay sir fine sir sir okay yeah? sir fine sir okay all right i'm all right i'm going to share the screen now yes all right yes yeah. so yes so that's the topic go for uh, the screen sir yes i i'll do that i'll do i'll do that yeah just one second yes okay yes so year in which the coin was made that's called in which the coin was minted so teachers had to speak about that particular year for example if the teacher 11 for example so this particular teacher called shinaya from andhra pradesh all right he speaks about what he was doing in the year in which the coin was minted okay so what you need to do is please listen to his speech carefully you can and make notes in your notebook and then you have to assign a score you have to mark his speech what will be his score out of 10 so please give a mark out of 10 all right uh, you can use i am going to show you uh, an app a tool for marking that's called mentimeter you can open the link and then i'll give you a code once you type the code you'll be able to give assign a mark and later you can tell me why did you give uh, this particular score all right yes so let me play the audio now okay i'm going to yes stop this and share an audio file so good morning everyone uh, this is srinivas i am from nello district from andhra pradesh today the first uh, activity i have got the coin which is uh, uh, minted in the year of 1999 so i th- i was in uh, 1999 i was in intermediate course i have a good memory about the year but before two years i faced a first failure in my life that was uh, ssc failure so my mother uh, took me and said me 
so don't worry my son every successful story also a great failures and she said one thing and she inspired me a lot with her words and from the from that onwards i didn't face any failure in my academic year so i thank to my mother entire my life and after the 1999 exactly 10 years i got the government job in 2009 uh, as a school assistant english so fortunate actually 9th of july so <laughs> exactly the last 9th is we have met a great platform here regional institute of english at bangalore okay. so thank you very much yes one well, just yeah so you have listened to his speech please wait just one second i'm going to share my yes now please go to www.menti.com and type 544580 and then assign a mark out of 10 so can you all please open this particular tool www.menti.com and type the number 544580 yeah they can go to open a new tab yes 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 open a new tab and then go to menti.com www yeah menti.com or in the chat window if you are on youtube please type the score in the chat window you can do that yes 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 yeah please type yeah yeah so you can type it in the chat box yes yeah give him a score out of 10 yeah please can i see it on your chat box in youtube those of you who are watching on youtube yes okay uh huh yeah yes i know yes yes i can see that yes yeah that's right that's right okay <laughs> 10 out of 10 yes 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 so please yes others can also try yeah let me analyze your score one second yes let me see the results yes yes 9 by 10 10 by 10 okay all right yes so just wait i am going to analyze your scores okay and can you also type the reasons yeah please in the chat box why did you give seven some of you have given five some have awarded six some have given eight out of 10 now the reasons why did you give six five nine or eight out of 10 okay great eight out of 10 but why did you give eight out of 10 okay yes so yes only why can i can see the analysis actually so only one teacher i think has given less than 5 now 2% of you you have you have given 5 out of 10 7% teachers you have given 6 13% given 7 24% 8 21% have given 9 and 33% of teachers have given 10 okay 10 out of 10 okay if you can justify the score why have you awarded 8 or 9 out of 10 can you give some reasons okay yeah so both here is saying there are some grammatical all right and he is yes vijay bharati is saying he is able to convey the message he should yeah he would more he would work more hard all right and then sadashiva sai gauri is saying confident but lack of grammar so she has given 8 sure he has given 8 out of 10 and he has positive attitude towards his future so i'll give him 9 out of 10 all right so you're giving 9 out of 10 because he has positive attitude towards future all right that's fine okay and then what are the other reasons due to yes his due to his confidence yes 
Uh, all right. So there are some mistakes. Yes, in his speech. All right. His effort was good, but there are grammatical. Ratna Kumari saying his effort was good. That's excellent. Very good. Right. And then Sudhakar sir is saying there is some regional influence. All right. Yes. So all right. Fluency. Yes. Yes. That's all right. Good. Okay. So sentence construction. There is some problem. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Now let's move on. Let's move on. I am going to show you the next slide. Yes. Okay. Now listen to teacher B. Here is another teacher. You will listen to uh, Varaprasad, who will introduce himself. All right. He'll talk about himself for about yeah one to two minutes. What you need to do is instead of marks, you have to assign a grade. Uh, you can assign either A or grade B, C, D, or grade E. These are the five grades. Please assign one grade based on your listening. Again, you can use Mentimeter. I'll show you the link for the Mentimeter. Yes. So go to Menti. Again, www.menti.com and type 984982, A2, please. Go to the same website, menti.com, and type this number, 984982. A2. Yes. Oh, wait, just wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah, I'll play the audio now. One second. I'll play the audio. Hi, good morning to one and all. I am Devi Varprasad, working as school assistant in JP High School and Suravaram, Tuni Mandal, East Royal District of Andhra Pradesh. Feeling proud to say I am the son of a farmer. I am the only son to my parents. I have two younger sisters. Both are married. Fortunately, I am married and blessed with two daughters. Spending the leisure time in my farm, helping my father and mother gives me more pleasure. Watching movies is my favorite recreation. My aim is to become a lecturer in English. My dream is to speak English so fluently like the news readers in BBC channels, HBO channels delivers the speech. I enjoy listening to cricket commentary in Star Sports. It's my privilege to attend the 30-day ELT program in RIE. Today is the second day of the program. I enjoyed the ice-breaking activity conducted by our course coordinator sir, that is C. Ravinaran Garu. I am confident that I can improve my pronunciation after experience in the language lab yesterday. I would like to learn many things from the faculty and make use of the environment at a maximum. Wishing you the best. Thank you all. So that's it. Now let's look at the slides. Yes. Uh, please go to mentimeter.com and type 984982. 984982 and assign a grade, please. Assign a grade. Or you can type the grade in the chat box. If you're on YouTube, please assign the grade on the chat box. Okay. A, grade B, means not B, marks. B, okay. Grades, please. Grades. A2? D, sir? A, B, C, uh, D only? A, A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D, E. Yes. A for yes. good. <laughs> All right. A for excellent. Maybe B for very good. Yeah, let's. I'll. I'll, yeah. I'll come later. Yes. Okay. A. Most of them are giving A. Some of them are giving B. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Go on. Go on. Yes. Yes. Award a grade. All right. Okay. So two of the teachers. Yeah. Use Mentimeter if you can. Okay. Two of you have given E grade. It's quite disappointing, actually. One has given D. Seven of you have given C grade. I, I mean, I, I am I am doing the analysis on the Mentimeter platform, actually. So seven have given C, and 83 teachers, 85 now has gone to 85 B grade. 85 teachers, 89 now B grade. If you assign the grade B, 91 now, 91, 92 teachers, 93. All right, 93 teachers have assigned the grade B, whereas 140 teachers have awarded grade A. All right, so more than 140 now, 147. So most of you have awarded grade A. Okay, that's good. Let's see. Okay, now what I'll do is let's look at the slides. All right, 
can you all see the screen sir can you see the screen yes sir yes sir okay. i'll just yes the current slide yes okay the question now is so which do you think is better marking or grading which is a better way of assessing speaking giving marks or awarding grades which is better and why you can type in the chat box again which do you think is better marking or grading and why yeah now give reasons which is better and why reasons please type the reasons yes not reasons for assigning grades now the question is why if you think giving marks is a better way of assessing speaking please can you give reasons why do you think giving marks out of 10 is better or why do you think giving a grade a b c d is better than giving marks grading is better so grading is better yeah sudharani is saying marking is better vijayalakshmi is also saying giving marks is better whereas banu rani and then pani sulochana leela meera padma vedulu mani adari shri hari saying marking is better whereas others are saying grading is better all right grading ravi shankar is saying grading is better ramarao is saying grading is better shrinivas rao marks says he says marks is better okay grading grading all right but why grading because yeah madhusudan rao has typed grade is grading is better because we cannot measure with marks all right grading is easier shino is saying grading is easier all right and then rama devi feels marking is better all right and all right okay can you think of some reasons why do you think grading is better all right yes grading is better to avoid yeah okay to avoid competition somebody said grading is better to avoid competition all right Gr grading is good for children okay good for children what about teachers is it also good all right so tension yeah students cannot perform well in a tense if you say today i'm going to conduct an exam definitely they'll be tensed if it is a surprise test they'll be all the more stressed so the very word like exam test assessment marking all these create a lot of tension in the class more right children are anxious so they cannot do well they cannot give their best in a in an anxiety the uh, created situation or you will have to make them feel free so that conducive atmosphere will make them do better so that's that's right but now the question is see some of you see, some of you have given 6 out of 10 to the first speaker but what does it mean what does me what does 6 out of 10 mean to you to the assessor to the examiner or what does 6 out of 10 mean to the speaker see when i give 6 out of 10 or 8 out of 10 some of you have given 10 out of 10 you're so liberal so generous good but what does this number mean does it mean anything to the speaker what what can the speaker infer what can shinaya for example that particular teacher can understand by this numerical by the number so it doesn't convey much right similarly just assigning a grade a or bc for example does it mean much does it convey any message as such maybe it creates a healthy competition in the class it reduces grading reduces tension reduces their anxiety or affective filter but see in my opinion just giving a mark or just assigning a grade doesn't have much significance it doesn't mean much it doesn't carry much weight or much meaning so there it there is no significance unless you attach some value to it right so what values can you attach what 
meaning can you attach to your marks or to your grades how do you make it more meaningful all right how do you interpret this mark or how do you interpret the grade that's what ismail sir was saying very good uh, good and all that yes so that is some value a means excellent b means very good or c good so that is some kind of value so again when you say very good what does it mean what is good what is not good if you say below average average below average it doesn't really convey much information to the children or to the speaker all right it doesn't give them much feedback just giving a number or a grade doesn't help them improve their speech they neither get positive feedback or feedback for improvement you're not giving any suggestions so that is the point i'm trying to make so how do you describe the score how do you interpret your judgment right so you must have some descriptors scoring should be based on certain criteria so your assessment should be based on certain descriptors these are called descriptors so you can call them parameters or indicators for assessment i'm sure you are all familiar with these terms indicators criteria for assessment so what could be the criteria for assessing speaking so we should go beyond giving marks or giving grades and we should think of some useful descriptors so criteria for assessing speaking so if you look at the global level for example this is the criteria used globally i mean many european countries for example they use cfr scale cfr is called common european framework of reference this is a common reference framework for all european countries they use this for assessing students ability to use english they have similar framework for assessing other languages like french or spanish all right this this these descriptors are applied for assessing speaking skills in english so common european framework for assessing speaking all right so this particular framework has six levels okay it starts with a1 a2 then they want to b1 b2 and then c1 so which is the lowest grade and which is the highest grade can you guess is a1 the lowest grade or c2 is the lowest as you can see below that c a1 means basic is a basic user of english a1 a2 there are two levels so if you are a basic user you will be awarded a1 or a2 grade if you are intermediate an average kind of user independent user you are at b1 or b2 level whereas the proficient user of the language is at c1 or c2 level either c1 or c2 level so there are six levels and users of the language are divided into three levels like basic in, independent and proficient speakers not necessarily speakers users actually it looks at all the skills not only on speaking they look at uh listening speaking reading and writing as well all the four skills now you cannot i, I know you cannot read anything from the, the screen you go to the website common european framework reference you will get all this you can download them is given in your reading material also the same descriptors are given in the reading material and there are a few questions based on these uh, frameworks uh, for assessment for your actual test okay so they also have can do statements so these disc descriptors are these descriptors are for teachers to assess their students whereas these statements are for students to carry out self assessment students can use these can do statements and assess themselves even teachers or any of us can use self assessment statements and see where do we stand and if you look at speaking so even in these self assessment statements they have descriptors related to all the four skills but when it comes to speaking they look at two aspects one is spoken production and the other one is spoken interaction so speaking doesn't mean only produce is not just production speaking also means your ability to interact with the audience so that's why it's for speaking is divided into spoken production and spoken interaction so when we say production it means your ability to produce english ability to yes for example a1 if you look at a1 level 
the statement goes like this i can use simple phrases and sentences to describe where i live and also to describe people i know so the basic level a1 i can use very simple phrases and sentences to describe the place or to describe the people i know all right familiar i can talk about familiar topics whereas b1 the next level uh, the statement is like this i can connect phrases in a simple way so i can use different phrases connect them in order to describe experiences and events so it's not just describing places and people you're going beyond that to describe experiences and events dreams hopes and ambitions and i can briefly give reasons and explanations for opinions and plans i can give reasons for and explanations for my opinions i can justify my opinions i can narrate a story or relate the plot of a book or film and describe my reaction so it's a higher level b1 c1 is at a much much higher level all right that is spoken production i can use i can give reasons i can narrate a story whereas when it comes to spoken interaction see the basic level is like this i can interact in a simple way provided the other person is prepared to repeat or rephrase things at a slower rate of speech and help me formulate what i am trying to say so this is the basic level i can interact in a simple way provided the other person speaks slowly and he is ready to repeat or rephrase what he says he or she says and an even also means i can ask and answer simple questions in areas of immediate need or on very familiar topics see the most basic level i can ask simple questions uh to get answers on familiar topics whereas c2 the highest level means i can take part effortlessly in any conversation or discussion and have a good familiarity with idiomatic expressions and colloquialisms so look at that you're almost like a native speaker you can play with language you can speak effortlessly you can take part in any conversation or discussion effortlessly without any problem any difficulty and you can use idiomatic expressions and colloquial language you're aware of formal informal language and then you can express so i can express myself fluently and convey finer shades of meaning precisely so you can decide if you look at the descriptors you can judge yourself where do you stand do you stand at a1 level a2 i'm sure many many of us many of us stand at b1 or b2 level that is uh, basic and then independent and proficient we stand at independent level i there are miles to go before we reach the highest level that is c2 where you are called a very proficient speaker uh, of english right if you if you think you are a proficient speaker then you should be able to take part in conversations any conversations any discussions on any topics and use phrases idioms and formal informal words and expressions and things like that so much much higher right now if you look at so i'm going i'm just trying to share different uh, models that we have for assessing speaking skills this is another framework which is used again internationally in all european uh, and european countries even in america australia it's called ielts i'm sure some of you are familiar with this international english language testing system a very competitive exam which tests your uh ability to use english in terms of listening speaking reading and writing so when it comes to speaking these are the band descriptors all right this is a public version that i am using which you can download from the website so i ielts international english language testing system they make use of four important criteria uh for testing speaking all right so one is fluency and coherence they assess your fluency and coherence they also look at lexical resource and then they assess grammatical range and accuracy and finally they also look at pronunciation so these are the four major criteria used for the assessment of speaking fluency and coherence lexical resource gra grammar grammatical range and accuracy and pronunciation now what do these mean these four speaking criteria 
relate to different areas of spoken english skills so when we say fluent coherence what does it mean so it means how easy is it for you to keep speaking is it easy for you to keep speaking all right and then do you pause or hesitate often when speaking do your ideas relate to the question so if the teacher asks a few questions for example is a child able to relate his ideas to the question asked are you able to i mean are the ideas relevant to the topic and then can you link your ideas together so coherence can you link the ideas together can you explain what you mean even if you forget the right word that is called rephrasing all right reformulating so first few one or two questions refer to fluency is it easy how easy is it for you to keep speaking do you pause or hesitate often when speaking it's related to fluency and then the third the remaining three questions are related to coherence do your ideas relate to the question can you link your ideas together can you rephrase so that's what we mean by fluency and coherence and then when we say lexical resource what it means is your ability to use a wide range of vocabulary so how wide is your vocabulary how accurately do you use words do you use collocations accurately i'm sure you are familiar with these words like collocations words which always go together all right for example break out break out is a collocation or my car broke down when i was traveling broke down words which go together combination of see broke down a verb and an adjective or a verb and an adverb a verb and a particle that kind of combination a verb and uh, an adjective that's called collocation all right so do you use collocations accurately do you use some less common words all right so lexical resource is mainly your ability to use a range of words phrases and expressions idiomatic expressions again and then in this competitive exams is your ability to use grammar so do you use a range of structures so grammatical range means a range of structures are you able to use simple compound complex sentences active passive voice for example if necessary or direct indirect speech do you are you able to use these in different contexts so that's what is meant by a range of structures and then do you get the word order right are you able to use the right word order and then do you use the right tense so your knowledge of tense forms see according to the topic you may have to use past tense sometimes so if you look at the first activity the speak shinaya or shinaya who spoke about the coin so what is the tense he used it was mainly past tense in that particular year i was doing this i did this i did that past tense forms either simple past or past tense so are you aware of different tense forms if you are introducing yourself maybe you have to use present tense forms all right if i am asking a question about your future then you have to use future forms example if the question is what did you do last weekend what did you do yesterday you should use past tense forms what are you doing now present form present tense forms what will you do next week future form so do you use the right tense and how often do you make mistakes so that's called accuracy so first two or three words i mean questions refer to grammatical range and next set of questions refer to accuracy how often do you make mistakes do your mistakes make it difficult to understand what you mean so do the mistakes affect comprehension uh certain mistakes are okay but if it affects come if the listener is not able to understand what you're trying to see because of too many mistakes then it affects your speech so in ielts they also look at grammatical range and accuracy and then pronunciation which is equally important so do you speak clearly the speed is not a criteria actual patterns stress patterns and is your speech clear that's what is being assessed okay so now in ielts actually they give uh nine bands up to nine so it goes from 0 to 9 nine is the highest band whereas if you i mean when you when it comes to classroom assessment maybe you can think of marks like this if you're awarding out of 10 second so going back to shinaya speech or varaprasad speech uh when i asked you to give marks out of 10 all right so the thing is you should have some criteria like this you cannot just give marks 
So you could have asked me, so sir, what is the criteria for assessment? How to give marks? How to give a grade? So marks can be uh, I, I, I divided into grades as well. So whether you award marks or grades, what is important is the teacher should have certain descriptors, certain criteria. And it's good to share this criteria with students as well. So when we say fluency and coherence, you can award 10 marks and, of, and then you have different levels. 10 means the highest score speaks fluently with only rare repetition or self-correction. See, some of you gave 10 out of 10 for the first speaker, 10 out of 10. Now you have to ask yourself, was he able to speak fluently without much? Was he able to speak coherently with fully appropriate cohesive devices? And then did he develop the topic fully and appropriately? Ask yourself. So it's not, well, I mean, somebody said he has a positive attitude towards life. He sounded confident. There is confidence. So it's not just conf confidence. We are looking at their language ability. All right. So when you assess somebody speaking, fluency and coherence are important. And then if you're giving eight, so in between there is nine, you don't have to have descriptors for each and every uh, score. So that is what 10 means. Whereas if you're giving eight, it means he or she is able to speak fluently with only occasional repetition or self-correction. That's it. And if you're giving six, then he's willing to speak at length, though he may lose coherence at times. He may be see, involving in self-correction, maybe has it. So six, some of you gave six out of 10. I think that is uh, justifiable. That is a very reasonable score. If he's willing to speak at length, but he loses coherence at times and uh, he repeats certain things, he self-corrects, all right? Whereas five would be too low. So four means he cannot respond without noticeable pauses and he may speak slowly with frequent repetition self-correction. That's not the case with uh, speaker A, all right? Two means pauses lengthily before most words. Every now and then he keeps pausing and there is little communication possible. And one means no communication is possible. Okay. And next, vocabulary. Again, out of 10, if you're assessing someone's speech, slurry out of 10, then 10 highest score means, so you, can, you cannot just give 10. 10 means he is able to use a wide vocabulary resource flexibly. And he uses less common and idiomatic expressions skillfully. Look at that. Look at each word. I think it's very important. Use a wide vocabulary resource readily and flexibly to convey precise meaning. Look at that. And uses less common and idiomatic vocabulary skillfully. Uses paraphrase effectively. Is able to summarize. All right. So look at the first speech audio that I played. So can you give 10? or eight or six. So eight means uses vocabulary resource flexibly to discuss a variety of topics, uses less common vocabulary, whereas six manages to, manages to talk about familiar and unfamiliar topic, but uses vocabulary with limited flexibility, all right? So that's, that's what is meant by vocabulary. Grammar, 10, excellent knowledge of grammar, all right? He is extremely good at grammar. He uses a full range of structures naturally and appropriately. And then he produces consistently accurate structures, absolutely no mistakes. He's, I mean, he's like a native speaker of English. All right, whereas eight, he uses a range of complex structures with some flexibility. He frequently produces error-free sentences. So I don't think speaker A deserves eight because there are some sentences with grammatical errors, all right? So six would be most appropriate. Again, he uses a mixed structures. There are some simple sentences. There are also complex sentences, but with limited flexibility. He may make frequent mistakes with complex structures. Simple sentences is fine. Whereas when he makes, when he attempts to construct complex sentences, maybe he, he or she makes some mistakes, all right? Four is he's able to produce basic sentence forms and some correct simple sentences. And two is cannot produce even basic sentence forms. So one, you know, there's no communication possible. And zero means he's not made an attempt. Okay, pronunciation again. Pronunciation 10 means uses a full range of 
pronunciation features with precision and subtlety. All right, excellent pronunciation, effortless to understand. You can speak effortlessly with uh, good intonation, stress patterns, eight, a wide range of pronunciation feature with occasional lapses. All right, whereas six means show some effective use of uh, pronunciation features, but this is not and then there may be some mispronunciation of individual words. See, somebody talked about regional influence. Yes, six means maybe there is a strong influence of regional language. Maybe he or she is uh, mispronouncing individual words or sounds, which reduces clarity at times. All right. And two is speech is often unintelligible. All right. So this is what I mean by criteria or descriptor. When you have such clear descriptors, you can make a rational judgment of some somebody's speech. All right, it's easy to uh, justify the score, and it's, it also helps us give feedback. So all these descriptors are very useful. You can use them to give feedback to someone. Right? Okay. Now let us do an activity. Okay, simple activity. Please look at the picture. I want you to study the picture carefully and then think about it for one or two minutes we'll be silent and think brainstorm who is this picture about what is it about all right what is he doing why is he doing this think of these questions and i want you to speak all right so just think take two minutes you can brainstorm jot down your ideas make notes in your notebook and then try to speak on based on this picture all right try to make a short speech Okay, I'll give you two minutes time. Please generate ideas. See what's happening here. What is the background like? Think about it and then I want you to speak. Yeah. So Ismail Garu, sir, is it possible for some of them to switch on their audio and speak? Sorry, Can sir. Uh, actually, they are offline, yeah. no? Yeah, they uh, can't. We'll, uh, try in next uh, session, sir. We'll all right. Okay. Okay. So, all right. so on YouTube, they cannot speak, right? Yes, sir. Not possible. They can only watch. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, in the next okay. sessions, we can we'll plan for that, sir. Oh, right. previously yes. we have done that also. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. So what you can yeah what you can do is you can just type three or four sentences in the chat box on YouTube. I just want you to type a few sentences related to the picture. Yes, let's see, let's see whether your sentences flow, uh, whether you're able to connect your ideas and then use different uh, words and phrases. Keep all those descriptors in mind, fluency, coherence, vocabulary, phrases and idiomatic expressions if necessary, grammar and the pronunciation. Of course, when you're writing, pronunciation doesn't uh, come into effect. All right, okay, just try to Construct a small paragraph, yes. Okay, yes. Yes, please type in the chat box, yes. Um, yes. He's, he's crying, already he's sadly talking. Who is he talking to? You'll have to connect one sentence with another and you have to construct a discourse, all right? Yes. Okay. He's depressed, he's crying, he's, yes, he's so sad. He has lost his dearest one, okay? Suresh Garu is saying he has lost his dearest one. And Prasad Rao is saying he's worried about his family from Corona, okay? All right. And then, yes, crying as all of us know, yes. And Shyam Yaluri is saying he's crying because of lockdown. Okay, Sri Lakshmi is saying the other person is not able to communicate clearly. Or this person is not able to understand the language of the other. That's why he's crying. Okay, maybe. All right. Thinking about a sad topic. Right. And Koneti Srinivasagar is saying listening to some bad news. All right. Yeah. Kilu Ramba Abdukaru is saying something has happened to his family. All right. Yes, he may be a, Shilakshmi Achanta is saying, he may be a daily wage worker 
working all the day and explaining his agony to his family members in his hometown very good i'm so happy yes yes he's yes he's in a position all right he's received sad news sushila madam is saying he's received bad news yes padmalata bad news yes yes okay go on please type your responses yes 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 he's crying we know but go to the next uh, sentence he's crying yes but why is he crying who is he why is he crying what do you think has happened to him or his family all right yes go on type a few more sentences i'm trying to assess your i mean your ideas are you able to connect another all right yes yes that's right mhm okay yeah shilata yes that person has some problem yes but imagine see when you when you describing a picture you have to imagine imagination is very important you cannot just say uh is of some reason he has some problem yeah think of a problem what do you think is a problem be very specific yes yes so nageshwar rao garu is saying he may be listening to unhappy news he is sharing a bad news all right with his friends and relatives so he is worried all right he is looking tense and agadha yeah jagadamba mata she is saying is he looking aggressive yeah i mean aggressive may not be the right word yes okay yes so he is is lost swati lakshmi is saying he's lost somebody or he's lost something yes yes that's right okay sheshagiri rao sir is saint he is a migrant worker all right and then chinnabba reka is he is wearing a mask and maybe is listening to his family members or friends death due to corona so he is worried about that thing that incident all right. very good excellent all right so what is important is your ability to think generate ideas and describe the picture and deliver a coherent speech so when you are speaking based on a picture like this these four important criteria you will have to keep in mind are you able to speak fluently with coherence are you able to build an argument a coherent argument all right and then are you able to use a wide range of vocabulary and then are you able to use appropriate grammatical structures and finally your pronunciation when you speak the pronunciation does matter right so that is a, a small activity to uh, just make a session tip actually if you i i'm sure some of you have seen this picture on social media or on uh, newspapers is actually a migrant laborer right is a migrant labor who is suffering because of the lockdown all right this happened during this uh, covid 19 pandemic he has walked thousands of miles and he is stuck in a particular place he was not allowed to move so that is a background actually you need to have so if i give you more time i am sure each one of you will be able to think and narrate uh, his experiences you i am sure you will be able to put yourselves in his place and uh, share your feelings and thoughts so i i am pretty sure you will be able to speak well on the given topic all right so when you assess children's speaking when you when you look at your students ability to speak so what what is also important is validity of assessment and reliability of assessment so when you listen to the first speech speaker a, for example i'm referring back to this because your scores were not reliable somebody gave 9 somebody gave 10 some of you gave 8 7 6 which means scores are not reliable you are not consistent each one is assigning a particular mark or a particular grade because you didn't have the criteria so your score is not reliable it is not yeah it may be valid but it's not reliable validity means you should know what you are assessing if you are assessing their speaking then you should design tasks which elicit their responses all right so these two concepts are important validity and reliability when you assess 
uh, student's speaking skills. And then you can either use an analytical scale or a holistic scale. So what you can do is you can think of activities for assessing vocabulary. So build their vocabulary in the first place at the primary level. I think it's very, very important to do a lot of activities before you think of even assessment. So before you assess to prepare students uh, with a lot of activities. So it's a good idea to design activities for vocabulary practice, for developing vocabulary. Then you can think of assessing their vocabulary. Also, you need to design activities to develop their pronunciation. So if you do a lot of practice to improve their pronunciation, then you can think of assessments. Without giving them practice, you cannot do assessment. So your assessment is not valid. Okay, so think of activities for practice and also for assessment. Activities for assessing grammar, give them a lot of input, all right? And then think of assessment activities. Similarly, activities for assessing fluency and coherence. All right. So can I take another 10 minutes, Ismail, sir? Yes, sir. 10 minutes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yes, yes. So another important concept in assessment is it's called task repetition. All right. It's important to repeat the same task two or three. If you do task one time, it is you yourself cannot give your best. Students definitely cannot perform well at one go. See so this picture that you look, picture of a migrant laborer. On the spot, nobody can speak uh, without getting time for preparation. So preparatory time is important. You need a lot of information, data. You need to collect ideas from different sources. The topic is familiar, maybe you can speak, but if it is not so familiar, you need time. You need to prepare well. All right, so first attempt, you may not be able to give your best. So give them another chance. Do the same activity after two or three days. That's called task repetition. So what I'm going to play two more audios. So this same activity is called coin activity, which we did on the first day of the training. And I did the same activity after five or six days. All right, so speaking activity done on week one, same activity done on week two. You can compare the performance of the teacher, all right? How did she perform on the first day and how did she perform after a couple of days? All right, so what I'll do is, yes, I will, yes, I'm going to play an audio now. Just give me one minute. I got the coins uh, 2013. Uh, those were the early days, uh, early days of mine when I started doing meditation. I started heartfulness meditation and I have undergone training there in the Heartfulness Institute. I, uh, only through that I realized many things and started uh, feeling more confident and uh, treating everything, accepting everything in a po more positive way than before. And I'm very, I show a lot of interest in learning, in listening more than I like to speak less and learn more from okay that was on the very first day of the training all right please remember and after weeks time same topic but the year is different all right see how she speaks uh, after a couple of days if you do the same activity after a couple of days the performance will significantly improve so i'm going to show you this i show you the same teacher uh, speaking on the same topic okay so very good afternoon. I am Arundhati. Uh, I have got this 1999 year coin. Uh, this was the year when I had got married. Uh, my husband. <laughs> so actually this was a very crucial year where I had to dis uh, stop my studies and uh, I had to get married and uh, I had to stay in a village and uh, where all my education had stopped and uh, there was no room for me to get education and further to go for higher studies. And at that time, I was in a, in a state of a disappointment where I couldn't express anything with anybody else and I was struggling a lot within myself to overcome all those uh, uh, difficulties. And I, I had even tried uh, initially when I got married. At the, in the same year, my grandfather was expired. And at that uh, moment, uh, I couldn't go ahead with uh, 
I wrote an entrance exam in Bayer at that time and I couldn't get the seat in that. And that made me mood that I will, how to overcome this and really that build a strong determination that I had to achieve a Bayer seat in that and, and I had to become a teacher at that moment. That, uh, that, uh, at that moment I started thinking but uh, I waited for an opportunity and uh, I was ready to grab that opportunity whenever it comes and uh, at last now I have become a teacher and I'm very happy. All oh, right, yes. Yeah. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this concept of task, so what happens when you repeat a task? So in the first performance, on the very first day, she spoke for about 42 seconds. She spoke only seconds, whereas next week she spoke for about one minute and 27 seconds all right she spoke more so that is one of the improvements she has made in terms of speech and next first speech see low voice she was not i mean it was not she was not pimped she was a bit shy so obviously she lacked confidence whereas in the, in the second performance she sounded yeah. very confident and it sounded natural. She talks about her family. She smiles. All right. So it sounds very natural. So first performance, there's a lot of hesitation. The same activity, when it is done for the second time, she looks confident. She speaks naturally. She begins with a greeting and then she introduces herself, which was all missing in the first attempt. And again, first performance, she said, I show a lot of interest in listening and learning more. So towards the end, she said, I show a lot of interest in listening and learning more, which is not related to the topic. The topic is about the year in which the coin was minted. What were you doing? Whereas in the second performance, all the sentences were relevant. They were related to the topic. So there is coherence. And then first performance, she said, got the coin 2013. So look at that sentence. I got the coin 2013. Second performance, I've got this 1999 year coin. So I'm not saying sentences are perfect in the second attempt. There are still mistakes. But when she did the activity second time, she was able to do much better. There was significant improvement in her performance. And then she said, this was the year when I got married. So look at that sentence, complex sentence. This was the year when I got married. It's not a simple sentence. It's a complex sentence. So maybe first performance, uh, she has used mostly simple sentences. The same activity is done after a couple of days. She was able to construct simple compound and complex sentences. She spoke more. And then in the first performance, there are many repetitions, false starters, all right? Uh, many I mean, fillers she has used. Whereas in the second performance, look at these, the range of vocabulary. I had even tried. She's able to use past perfect form. I had to become a teacher. She had to become a teacher at that moment. And at that time, look at the linkers, conjunctions, linkers, such cohesive devices used. So this won't happen in the very first attempt. This will happen with feedback. See, when she spoke for the first time, the teacher listened to her. I, the trainer, listened to, listened to her speech. I gave some feedback, suggestions for improvement. When I did the same activity in the next week, she put her efforts and she uh, has shown significant progress. And then she actually arranged of this course markers. She was able to connect one sentence with another. So that is an improvement. Maybe these are the small, I'm not saying that, I mean, uh, there are leaps, I mean, she, her improvement is in leaps and bounds. All right. These are, I mean, but still you can see the progress is visible. There, there is some visible improvement in her ability to speak. So your students also, so give them time, do the same task, two, three times, there is no harming in doing the same task even. But the thing is, now this is important, learning language through task repetition. They learn language. They're not only speaking, they're also acquiring language. Okay, language acquisition. How does language acquisition happen through task repetition? It's based on a sound argument made by Martin Bygate actually. And then Scott Thornbury in a recent webinar, he talked about uh, task repetition and the advantages of task repetition. So second performance, yes, there is improvement. And Scott Thornbury in his webinar, he says, it is a systematic repetition. It is not reproduction of the same thing. She's not reproducing the same thing that she said 
in the first speech so even the task that i repeated it is a systematic repetition and then it helps the speaker to activate and reactivate the same set of cognitive processes there's a lot of thinking that's happening she has to activate reactivate the same set of cognitive processes all right and then fluency it happens in the brain constant thinking generating ideas so that there is i mean this kind of mental rehearsal is happening so it's not mindless rote memorization it is not rote repetition it's not mechanical repetition it's meaningful systematic repetition mm -hmm. so there is planning the speaker the teacher here all right or your your students for example they have to plan they have to assemble thoughts they assemble connect ideas and then repeat in a genuinely communicative context they have to make it communicate they have to convey the message all right and it's not repetition at the level of words not even at the level of sentences it's a complete speech or a discourse and then it's not like drilling you're not a drilling activity it it is repeating the cognitive processes actually that you're repeating the cognitive processes all right so constant thinking happens critical thinking creative imagination all that takes place in the brain so these are the advantages of task repetition and then martin bygate in his book published in 2018 he talks about task input all right so that is a kind of input that teacher has to give uh, i you have to give for your students give them time to plan to rehearse and then ask them to perform that is performance one then they reflect they get feedback from the teacher then you repeat the activity all right so first give the topic give them instructions help them discuss in groups that is planning rehearsal all right preparation preparatory time and then you go for performance students perform and then the teacher gives feedback students reflect on their speech and then you repeat the task so they perform for the second time and then third performance fourth performance you will definitely see a lot of progress gradual growth in their speech but again the the, only, the important thing sir what you need to remember is you need to change one variable it's the same task but change one variable for example coin minted so first time she got a coin minted in one particular year second time the year was different so coin minted and change one aspect of the task so same task but change the variable same or change the mode from speaking you can move on to writing from reading first you can make them read and then speak or from unrecorded speaking then you can start recording their speech and first you are focusing on fluency when you repeat the task you can focus more on accuracy right so these things are important and scott thornbury says you have to revisit the text revisiting the text after a month same text same how many of us do that see we don't generally do that once the unit is taught a lesson is taught then we forget it completely and re recall the lesson only at the time of the test or exam we don't revisit the same unit same lessons after a couple of days after a month it's not recapitulation things like that it's a cognitive process doing it with a purpose with a meaningful purpose all right so revisiting the lesson revisit the text uh, read, read uh, i mean written text or printed materials and repeating tasks these are all very very useful okay so this is the last slide i'm going to conclude my talk with this slide these are some of the classroom assessment tasks which will help you to assess your students speaking abilities there are plenty of such tasks i'm giving you only a few examples i mean at the primary level maybe we all begin with reading aloud tasks you can do it in a meaningful manner again not just mechanical reading so you can think of reading aloud tasks repetition tasks at least at some tasks where students have to just repeat either word level repetition or sentence level repetition say class 1 class 2 children that is what they can do at the most you can help them read aloud you can help them repeat words sentences uh, and then you can elicit responses maybe in words phrases or simple sentences these are called elicitation tasks and then you can give them sentence completion tasks an incomplete sentence is given they have to complete the sentence think you can think of dialogue completion tasks yesterday for example shobha madam and madhavi she gave a very good demonstration i was so happy she did some speaking activities as well there were some sentence completion activities dialogue completion tasks there were role plays and then yeah you can also think of translation tasks give them words in their mother in telugu give them words in telugu let them uh, give the words in english 
or give them sentences in telugu translated into english and vice versa will also help all right giving words in telugu english asking them in telugu i mean these activities are useful again at the i mean grade 1 grade 2 and then you can think of question and answer activities and then question genuine questions not textbook comprehension kind of questions genuine questions what did you do what did you do last week in which film do you like the best things like that all right so question and answer and then paraphrasing they'll read they'll summarize in their own sentences then picture cue tasks show them pictures give them picture as a cue and then do speaking tasks role play so you can have individual or i mean, you can have pair or group discussions you can also have presentation activities there are a lot of such activities you can do uh, to give them practice and also for assessment purposes uh, that is all for today thank you for some of the references and i think we can have a short question and answer session thank you very much everybody for your patient hearing and for your active parts over to you ismail sir thank you very much sir yeah thank language where we need to use our something making formative judgments uh, a series of uh tasks formative tasks and based on which you give feedback you make judgment about their skills whereas assessment has many more other implications right yeah thank you very much sir uh yes again uh, that pushparashu gitulur is asking that what is impromptu type of speech impromptu impromptu type of speech is on type of speaking activity where students speak the spur of the moment all right instantaneous speech without any preparation they have to speak impromptu speech or you can also call it extempore e x t e m p o r e extempore extempore means speaking on the given topic on the spot on the spot speech that is impromptu without any prompts without any clues without any support impromptu yeah on thank the you very much sir thank you Yeah, uh, yes, another question. Uh, yes. Why they he uh, he? She is asking that. Is we need to assess as you have done here uh, for primary and high school students also speech as uh, speak as uh, speaking assessment. Yes, yes. That is what I mean. See, we don't. We generally focus on reading and writing. Even most of the tests and examinations test students' reading and writing skills. We don't. spend enough time on speaking listening and speaking skills so speaking as you know is very important these days students need to communicate their thoughts and ideas not only in english class even in other subjects so if something is inside unless you express what is inside your mind uh you'll not be able to stand and out from others right so it's these days is very very important to achieve that communicative skill communication <laughs> speech these are all important acts not only in the classroom in the school even in the world outside the class so you have to conduct speaking activities give them a lot of practice and also think of uh, assessment activities for testing speaking i think yeah thank you very much for good answer yes, sir uh cheru yazulu yeah, is asking a difference between clarity and fluency clarity and fluency yes 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 i mean clarity a refers to pronunciation are you able to pronounce words sound sounds and words clearly ability to speak without much silence okay so if you're silent for too long that means you're thinking either thinking about the words or thinking about the language grammar that is fluency all right whereas clarity is clarity of words clarity of pronunciation here when it comes to speaking what we mean is clarity of your pronunciation accent should be clear intelligible easily and should be easily understood by the listener that is clarity thank you so much sir uh, oh, so I still there are so many questions your question yes Uh, yes. then yeah there are so many questions still waiting for us but uh, time will not pass yeah yes uh, thank you That's very right. much sir yeah. otherwise yeah. really uh, uh, there are some technical glitches but 
no the presentation is very very excellent sir i have also thank you so much sir i have looked at tens about this technical <laughs> issues i have gone through the, your yes, presentation yeah. very impressed so yeah. much sir so, thank you for your uh, support sir yes thank you so thank much thank you very much and we'll thank you everyone yeah. thank you everybody thank you ismail garu sir thank you all the teachers for your patience and for your active participation throughout thank you thank you very much sir uh, we are signing out for today we'll meet tomorrow with good another fresh topic till then namaste and bye bye